Welcome to the sixth Sunday of Easter at St. Francis of Assisi Parish. Let us pray. Almighty ever-living God, who restore us to eternal life in the resurrection of Christ, increase in us, we pray, the fruits of the Paschal Sacrament and pour into our hearts the strength of this saving food, through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you and with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. Glory to you, O Lord. Jesus said to his disciples, As the Father has loved me, so I have loved you. Abide in my love. If you keep my commandments, you will abide in my love, just as I have kept my Father's commandments and abide in his love. I have said these things to you so that I may, so that my joy may be in you, and that your joy may be complete. This is my commandment that you love one another as I have loved you. No one has greater love than this, to lay down one's life for one's friends. You are my friends, if you do what I command you. I do not call you servants any longer, because a servant does not know what the master is doing. But I have called you friends, because... I have made known to you everything that I have heard from my Father. You did not choose me, but I chose you, and I appointed you to go and bear fruit, fruit that will last, so that the Father will give you whatever you ask him in my name. I am giving you these commands so that you may love one another. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise be to you, Lord Jesus Christ. What a beautiful image it is when we see a newborn infant nestling in its mother's arms as she holds a child close to her heart. How wonderful it is when such a moment awakens our souls and psyches to a deeper appreciation of what it means for a child to be beloved of its mother and its mother beloved of her child's heart. Such a picture awakens my spirit as to what Jesus is talking about when he calls us in today's gospel to abide in his love. Abide in my love, he tells us. We can but begin to ponder what that word abide that Jesus uses means. To abide in Jesus is to rest in the love of Jesus. To abide in Jesus is to feel safe, secure, and hope-filled in relationship to Jesus. To abide in Jesus is to invest one's mind heart, soul, and one's life, one's complete trust and complete confidence in Jesus. The call of Jesus for us to abide in him is a call to come to a sacred space in a sacred place. The call of Jesus for us to abide in him is a call for us to own, name, and claim this holy and sacred space and place as a mark of our identity as his followers. We realize that we are beautifully blessed as Jesus speaks of his desire to bring joy to our hearts and lives as if we abide in him. Joy is so much more than happiness. Joy is so much more than being successful. Joy is so much more than feeling peace or contentment or fulfillment. 
Joy speaks to the heart of the mother delighting in the presence of her child being in union in communion with her mind, her heart, her soul, and her spirit. Today's Gospel recounts a moment during the Last Supper, the final evening that Jesus spent with his disciples. Early during the meal, Jesus had told them that he would be betrayed, he would be denied, and he would die. What a somber and sad Passover for his shocked and confused followers. But now Jesus' words transform their mood. In this dark hour, he tells them that his love for them is so rich and full that they can abide in it. Jesus' love is not something that they can only have a portion of, the way a child can have but a piece of candy. The love of Jesus is much faster than that. We can dwell in Jesus' love. The love of Jesus can be our home. The love of Jesus can be our oxygen. Every breath, every step, every act of our lives can be embraced and enveloped in the love of Jesus. And why does Jesus make this offer to his disciples and to us? And it's not because his disciples nor we have done something to deserve it. Jesus gives his disciples, including us, his love, so that our joy may be complete. Jesus gives his love freely, without reserve. The way an open tap pours out water. The only response he asks us of is that we share that which has been given to us. Our gospel tells us that we have been appointed to go and to bear fruit, fruit that will last. We are called to faith and to and fidelity and joy and to share these gifts with others. Eucharist becomes the place where we remember yet once again what it means to abide in Jesus. Eucharist becomes a place where we are fed and nurtured and nourished by the abiding love of the Trinity. Eucharist is a place from which we go forth into God's world seeking to witness to saving life, death, and resurrection of Jesus. Eucharist becomes the moment from which we are mission to be just and sound stewards of God's creation. Eucharist becomes time where we will hold close to our hearts those who suffer silently. Eucharist becomes a time of grace, blessing mothers and fathers everywhere, nurturing the next generation and teaching their children to abide in them and to abide in Jesus. And so it is that when we receive Jesus in the Eucharist, we expect a fresh infilling of his love. Let us expect healing, mercy, forgiveness, encouragement, revelation, and creation. Let us take our blessings to others that we meet on our journey of life through this coming week of our lives. Praise be Jesus risen. Amen. Alleluia. Alleluia. Alleluia.